In this video, we're going to be learning all about the Cartesian plane. So let's start by looking at what the Cartesian plane is. The Cartesian plane is formed by two lines, the x-axis and the y-axis intersecting. So here we've got our two axes. The horizontal one is the x-axis and the vertical one is the y-axis. The origin is the point where the two axes intersect, where they cross over each other. So this is the origin over here. And this is the point where x and y are both equal to 0. So if we write that as an ordered pair, then the x value is 0 and the y value is also 0. So that is our origin over there. Which means that everywhere along the x-axis, it in, it's intersecting with where the y-axis is equal to 0. That means that everywhere on the x-axis, y is equal to 0 and everywhere on the x-axis or everywhere on the y-axis it's where it's intersecting where x is equal to 0 so everywhere on the y-axis x is equal to 0 as well okay the Cartesian plane is divided up into four quadrants here's a quadrant over here here's a quadrant here's a quadrant and here's a quadrant so this is quadrant 1 quadrant 2 quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. In the first quadrant over here, the x value, if you look on our x-axis over here, if this is 0, then everything to the right of 0, these are all positive numbers. So everywhere in this quadrant over here, our x values are going to be positive. And if you look at the y values over here, they're above the x-axis and the x-axis is where y is 0 so they are all positive as well so in quadrant 1 the x values are all positive and the y values are also all positive in quadrant 2 if you look over here this is now on the left hand side of the origin so everywhere on the left hand side of the origin remember the origin is where x is 0 so everything to the left of that the x values are going to be negative so in quadrant 2, because it's on the left-hand side of the origin, our x values are going to be negative, but it is above the x-axis, which is where the y is 0. So all of our y values are going to be positive here, just like they were over there. So everything above the x-axis, the y values are going to be positive. Okay, on the right-hand side of the y-axis, our x values are positive, but on the left-hand side of the y-axis, our x values are going to be negative. So in quadrant 3, we're also on the left-hand side of the y-axis, so our x values are going to be negative, the same as they were in quadrant 2. And then our y values are, now we're below the x-axis, so this is where y is negative, so our y values are going to be negative. And then in quadrant 4, we are back on the right-hand side of the y-axis, so that's on this side, it's on the right of the origin. That means that our x values are going to be positive, and our y values, we're below the x-axis still, just like we were over here, so our y values are going to be negative. So in the first quadrant, everything is positive. In the second quadrant, x is negative because it's on the left-hand side of the y-axis, but y is still positive because it's above the x-axis. Everything below the x-axis is going to be negative y values. So here, for the quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, the y values are both negative. But our x values in quadrant 3, it's on the left-hand side of the y-axis. So our x values are negative. And on the right-hand side of the y-axis in quadrant 4, our x values are going to be positive. Okay, so that is what your, your Cartesian plane looks like. If you've got the axes like this, the x-axis and the y-axis, they intersect at the origin, which is the point 0, 0. That's where x is 0 and y is also equal to 0. Everything on the right-hand side of the y-axis is going to have positive x values. Everything on the left-hand side of the y-axis is going to have negative x values. Everything above the x-axis is going to have positive y values and everything below the x-axis is going to have negative y values. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at points on the Cartesian plane. Every single point or any point on the Cartesian plane can be identified 
using an x value, which we call an x coordinate, and a y value, which we call a y coordinate. The x and y coordinates are written as an ordered pair, just like we had for our origin over here. We wrote it as 0, 0. This is the x value and the y value. That's an ordered pair. So it's an ordered pair where x is written first and y is written second. Okay, so when we're writing, or when we're plotting points on the Cartesian plane, we can label them or uh, write their coordinates as an ordered pair where the x value is written first and the y value is written second. And that tells us, the coordinates tell us the position of the point on the Cartesian plane. So let's have a look at a few examples of points of the Cartesian plane. Here's our first example. So this is the point A, and the coordinates of this point are 2, 6. So if you look over here, remember, the first value in the coordinates over here, in the ordered pair, is the x value. So the 2 corresponds with 2 on the x-axis. The x value is 2, so that's 2 on the x-axis. And then the 6 corresponds with 6 on the y-axis because the y value is 6. Okay, so that's what the point 2, 6 looks like. Let's have a look at point B on this example. We've got over here point B, which is negative 6, 4. So negative 6 is our x value, so that's negative 6 on the x-axis. So you can see over here, it is in line with the negative 6 on the x-axis. And then the 4 is the y value, so that is in line with the 4 on the y-axis. Then we've got point C over here. This is in the third quadrant, and it is the point negative 7, negative 6. Negative 7 being the x value, so it's in line with the negative 7 on the x-axis. And negative 6 being the y value, so it's in line with the negative 6 on the y-axis. So that's point C over there. Point D is in quadrant 4. It has got 5 for the x value, so that is in line with the 5 over there, and negative 5 for the y value, so that's in line with the negative 5 on the y-axis over there. So that's point D. Then point E, you can see this is actually on the x-axis. Okay, So the x value is what it is sitting on on the x-axis. It's 4. And the y value is 0. Remember we said that the x-axis is where y is 0 because this is in line with the 0 on the y-axis. Okay, so this point is 4, 0. And then we've got the point F, which is this one over here. It is now sitting on the y-axis. So our x value is 0 because it's in line with 0 on the x-axis. Remember, everywhere on the y-axis x is equal to 0. So our x value is 0, and the y value is going to be negative 7, because it's negative 7 on the y-axis. Okay, so that is just a few examples of points that you can find on the Cartesian plane. Now, the points in these examples are labeled a to f. The point a is not always going to be 2, 6. The point b is not always going to be negative 6, 4. It depends on the example that you're given. That, that is just what these particular points have been labeled in this example. Okay, so now you are going to practice working with points on the Cartesian plane. In this example over here, you have been given a number of different points, and you need to write down the coordinates of the points plotted on the Cartesian plane in the table over here. Okay, so you've been given this Cartesian plane over here with a whole lot of points that have been plotted. You need to write their coordinates down. The first one's been done for you. So if you look over here, this is the point A. The x value you get from the x-axis. So you look where does it correspond or what value does it correspond with on the x-axis. That is going to be your x value. That's, going to what, that's what you're going to write first in your ordered pair. And then the y value corresponds with the number on the y-axis that it is in line with. And in this case, it's 2. So the point A has the coordinates 1, 2. You're going to do the same thing for all of the points in this example. And I'm going to give you two minutes to find the coordinates of all the points in this example.
Okay, so let's go through what you should have got for the coordinates of each of those points. So point A was already done for you. Let's go on to point B. So if you look at point B over here, the first thing you're going to do is look for the x value. So it is in line with negative 3 on the x-axis, and then the y value is in line with negative 5. So point B is negative 3, negative 5. Negative 3 for the x value, negative 5 for the y value. Right, then point C is over here. It is in line with 3 on the x-axis and negative 3 on the y-axis. So it's going to be C is 3, negative 3. Then point D is over here. It is sitting on the x-axis, which means that first of all, its x value is negative 7, and the y value is going to be 0 because everywhere on the x-axis, y is 0. It's in line with the 0 on the y-axis. So this is going to be negative 7 for x, 0 for y. Then point D is over here. It has got an x value of negative 4 and a y value of 8. So point E is negative 4, 8. Then point F is sitting over here. It's on the y-axis. That means that the x value is 0 and the y value in this case is 6 over here. So your point F is 0, 6. Then point G is over here. It has got an x value of 5 and a y value of negative 7. So G is 5, negative 7. H is the origin over here. The x and the y value are both going to be 0 over there. So H is the point 0, 0. Then I is over here. The x value at I is 6 and the y value is 5. So that's going to be the point 6, 5. Then J is over here. The x value is negative 8 and the y value is negative 4. So J is going to be negative 8, negative 4. Then for k, it's over here, the x value is 4 and the y value is 7. So k is the point 4, 7. And then the last one, l is over here, x is negative 4 and y is 4. So you should have got for l, negative 4, 4. So that's what you should have got for all of those points in that example. So that's how you find the coordinates of points on the Cartesian plane. You look at the point you see where does it line up with on or what value does it line up with on the x-axis and what value does it line up with on the y-axis to get the coordinates of that point. Now you're going to practice plotting points on the Cartesian plane. So in this example over here you've got your Cartesian plane. If you haven't got the worksheet that goes with this lesson you're going to need to draw the Cartesian plane for yourself. Okay, so I've got the Cartesian plane over here. You need to plot each of the points in this table on the Cartesian plane. So you're going to take A and you're going to fill that in on the Cartesian plane. So you're going to find the x value of negative 5 and the y value of 1. And you're going to draw a point over there and label it A. Then you're going to go and do B, which is negative 5, negative 8. You're going to go negative 5 for x, negative 8 for y plot a point over there and label it B. And you're going to carry on and do all of them. Once you've done them, you're going to use your ruler to join the points from A to K and then back to D again. So you're going to join A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E, all the way up to K. And then you're going to join K to D. And then you're going to see what picture you end up with at the end. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes to work on this activity.
Okay, so let's see what you should have ended up with. So first, let's have a look at where your points should be. So point A, negative 5, 1, should be over here, where x is negative 5 and y is 1. Point B, negative 5, negative 8, you should have over here, where x is negative 5 and y is negative 8. Point C, 5, negative 8, you should have over here, where x is 5 and y is negative 8. Point D should be over there, where x is 5 and y is 1. Then point E should be over here at negative 7, 1. Point F should be up here on the y-axis at 8, where, F is, where x is 0 and y is 8. Point G should be over here, where x is 4 and y is also 4. Point H should be over here, where x is 4 and y is 7. Point I should be over here where x is 2 and y is 7. Point J should be here where x is 2 and y is 6. Point K should be over here where x is 7 and y is 1. So that's what all of your points should look like. Then the next thing you had to do was you had to go and join the points from A to K and then back to D using your ruler to see what picture forms. So let's go and have a look at what you get when you do that. So first of all, we're going to join from A to B. And that's what we should have got over here, then from B to C, then C up to D, then from D across to E over here, then E up to F over there, F to G, then G up to H, across to I, and then down to J, and then down to K over here. And then you have to close it off by joining the K to the D. And that's what you should have ended up with. You should have ended up with a little picture of a house. And that is how you work with points on the Cartesian plane. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.